what some are calling a new blow for the faithful, just days after the U.S. Supreme Court redefined the tradition of marriage. Tonight, Oklahoma's Attorney General is challenging a state Supreme Court decision there that's declared a monument of the Ten Commandments is a religious symbol and must be removed from the grounds of the state capitol. Attorney General Scott Pruitt had argued that the monument was identical to a Texas monument that was found constitutional by the U.S. Supreme Court not long ago. No matter, the Oklahoma Supreme Court says it has got to go. Britt Hume is our Fox News senior political analyst. Britt, thank you for being here. And so I looked back because I was actually working for you down in the D.C. Bureau when that federal court uh, case on the Ten Commandments was decided. And it was an unusual collection of justices that upheld the monument on the grounds of the Texas state capitol. And the, and the collection included Justice Breyer, one of the most liberal justices on the court. And what he said when he said it, the monument can stay. It's been there for a long time. Yes, it's religious, but it's also a historical uh, symbol. The Ten Commandments are, uh, speak to our history. And what the, this liberal justice said at the time, Britt, was a contrary decision would lead to the removal of many longstanding Ten Commandments in public and could thereby create the very kind of religiously based divisiveness that the Constitution seeks to avoid. And so nonetheless, here we go with the religiously based divisiveness that he was concerned about and that apparently the Oklahoma State Supreme Court is not in a week where religious liberty is already uh, coming under fire. Well, there you go, Megan. I mean, I, obviously, the, the, the uh, Oklahoma Attorney General is going to challenge this. It'll eventually end up before the Supreme Court, and we'll see if Justice Breyer and the rest of that majority uh, feels the same way. The cases appear to be pretty comparable, so uh, perhaps this, uh, this mining will end up uh, surviving. What you're hearing from people online already, I mean, this, this story is going crazy on the Fox News website. People are clicking on it in record numbers. Um, and it's, uh, you know, they're interested. They want to know why the Ten Commandments can't stand. Because just days ago, we got a monumental Supreme Court decision on gay marriage. And many people felt, okay, even people who supported gay marriage said, okay, gay marriage is legal now. It's constitutional in every state. It's legal. Uh, and yet, what happens to people of faith who have a genuinely held objection to gay marriage? What will happen to them? And on the heels of that, you get a court, a Supreme Court in the state of Oklahoma saying, Here's what's going to happen to you. No more Ten Commandments on the public grounds. That we cannot. We can have the White, the White House in rainbow, but we cannot have the Ten Commandments on the, the state capitol grounds. And people are wondering whether this kind of what they view as intolerance is what the founders envisioned or what the country wants. Well, I don't, Megan, I don't think religious intolerance is what the country as a whole wants. Uh, and I don't really associate what the Oklahoma Supreme Court has done here with what the Supreme Court did in gay marriage. Uh, indeed, as I suggested and as you suggested, the Supreme Court might well reverse that Oklahoma court's decision. Having said that, it's fair to wonder, however, whether the gay marriage decision will prove as divisive as some fear. Um, certainly the Solicitor General suggested that uh, the tax-exempt status of religious institutions would come under challenge because of this, that it would be, as he said, an issue. Uh, we're hearing some calls now, not many, but some, for the uh, removal, the, uh, the, the doing away with those uh, religious exemptions. And one who is a, a person of traditional faith in this country, um, who, to whom the idea of gay marriage seems alien to the concept of marriage as it's been known for the better part of millennia, um, those, such people feel a little armed and that the law of the land is now something that they don't recognize mm -hmm. and they feel and they're hearing as, you know, as, as in some cases has happened to our friend uh, uh, Father Jonathan when he was spat upon. Uh, while witnessing a you know a gay pride parade in New York over the weekend, they are afraid that the attitude toward them will be as Justice Alito uh, warned in his dissent, uh, one of uh, treatment as if they are as if they are bigots, bigots. Uh, and and the rest of it. And but, but, that but I if think you read is the majority a legitimate opinion, concern. Brett, Justice Kennedy says basically, don't worry, you're still feel you're still free to believe as you want to believe. Well, he, if you're going to act on it, that may be a problem. Well, what he said was that you're free to teach 
the traditional faith that you know, and you're free to advocate it. What he didn't say is you're free to, you're free to practice it, that they're free to exercise it, although the Constitution's First Amendment uh, would certainly on its face appear to guarantee that, but he didn't mention that. He, just, he mentioned the First Amendment without any reference to the free exercise of it, and I think that was probably intentional. I think he probably didn't want to go that far mm -hmm. because he felt that this opinion uh, would be in the way of that. Now, in the meantime, we heard from the president, uh, and he's saying, speaking of this being well, one of his best weeks ever, his best week ever, and talking about how he knows what he's doing, and he is fearless, and he is going to push for as much progress or, or progressive ideas as he possibly can in the remainder of his term. How, is this a huge victory for him, as many in the mainstream media are, are saying, that this is, like, this is his doing and this is his victory that should embolden him in his remaining time in office? Well, he's had a pretty good week in the sense that the things that he supported uh, have been vindicated. Uh, he had a good week on, on the trade uh, measure that he wanted to give him this, uh, this negotiating authority, and which meant the treaties could be produced and would have to be voted up or down, no amendments, by Congress. Of course, he couldn't get that with the support of his own party. It required the re massive amounts of support for the Republicans for him to do it. Now, that's a victory nonetheless, but, but it's certainly not a sign of his strength within his own party. Uh, these Supreme Court decisions, which he favored, certainly the one on Obamacare, I would, I would rate that as a near death experience for Obamacare because the sloppy drafting of it nearly, you know, the decision was after all, um, you know, fairly narrow, six to three, uh, to uphold it. Uh, was, you know, it came down to the wire, really. I mean, the fact that it, he didn't think it should even get to the high court, but it did. Uh, it could have gone the other way, so Obamacare survives. It, it isn't necessarily vindicated. It's still unpopular. It still has all sorts of problems that have to do with rising costs and people losing their insurance and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, it's something he wanted and he got it. And he's, he's, he has every right to be happy about it. Uh, similarly, on the, on the gay marriage ruling, that was one he certainly supported and, and urged, but the Obama administration was not a party to that case. It filed a, a Mika's brief, which means friend of the court, and, and the Solicitor General, as we mentioned earlier, it was heard on the subject. So in a way, that's a victory for at least a cause that he supported. Um, but, you know, you look around the rest of the political landscape, and it's not clear to me that, that he should have a great deal of encouragement about how well he's going to be able to put his agenda into effect for the next 18 months or so. Mm -hmm. Now, the, I mean, the gay rights decision last week was, the, was a long time coming as a result of the work of gay rights activists who had strategized this in a brilliant way. I mean, they made sure it did not go up to the high court before they thought they had a high court ready to rule in their favor before they got decision after decision in all the cases, in all the states. And it was not the administration pushing that along. It was their movement. But I well, got to go. Just one more thing. Sure. Remember, Barack Obama was on the other side of this issue seven or eight years ago. And three years ago, actually, up, up until like a month before the last election. Britain, exactly. it's good to see you. Thank you, Megan. Well, a group of Satanists is tonight claiming victory after a court told the state of Oklahoma to remove a monument to the Ten Commandments from the state capitol. Before the ruling, the Satanists wanted to install their own tribute, a pagan idol showing a bearded goat, something like this, on the capitol grounds right next to the Ten Commandments. Joining us now, Randy Brogdon, who's a former Oklahoma state senator who authored the bill to install the Ten Commandments monument. Also, Lucian Graves. Spokesman for the Satanic Temple. We will begin with Lucian. All right, Lucian. So is it like Lucian as in Lucifer? Is that where, is that why you're called that? Sure, as you like. As, much as, as you like. I don't, like, is that your birth name? No, it's not. Okay. So what is it that first drew you to the Satanic Temple? Well, I, I helped co-found the Satanic Temple. Why? Uh, why? Because it, it is an embodiment of my deeply held beliefs, and I think there's a s distinct need for a counterbalance against uh, the dominant religious privilege in America today. What are the deeply held beliefs that drew you to the Satanic Temple? Well, we have seven tenets. You can look them up online, but in, uh, essentially we view uh, Satan as a symbolic embodiment of the ultimate uh, rebel against tyranny. Okay, so now you're, you're happy because you got the Ten Commandments taken down, but do you, are you still pushing to have the goat with the horns and so on put up on the state capitol grounds? No, we, we don't want our monument there without the Ten Commandments there. Um, the point uh, all along was that it would complement and contrast the Ten Commandments and reaffirm 
that we live in a pluralistic nation that respects uh, diversity and religious liberty. But the thing with the, you know, the, the horns and so on, the, the Ten Commandments goes up because not only does it have some religious meaning, but it has historical meaning too. I mean, would you acknowledge that about the Ten Commandments? Well, I would, uh, well, yes, if you would acknowledge that. Baphomet has historical uh, meaning as the well. Baphomet it is the goat back, with the, uh, yeah. The image it. at least goes back to the 19th century. It's at least as old as Mormonism in any case. Okay, so let's say it does, but do you acknowledge that about the Ten Commandments? So there's nothing, you have no problem with the Ten Commandments standing there uh, next to your devil figure, right? That's correct. So long as uh, multiple points of view are allowed, um, there's nothing wrong with the religious monument being up. But uh, that really wasn't the argument that Oklahoma was making. They were saying that it wasn't a religious monument and that it, uh, the Ten Commandments monument served a secular purpose, which is outright false. Well, they the U.S. Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court was, found that. I mean, the U.S. Supreme Court has already ruled that the Ten Commandments, that the displays not only have a religious significance, but also a historical one. Well, you're talking a different type of issue because in Oklahoma, they were ruling by the state constitution, not the federal constitution. I know, so it's but an entirely it's, different issue. If you're talking it's Texas, it's a moot point. It's not that different, but you're right. Oh, Texas, it's entirely different. In, in we're talking different constitutions. I, I've looked at we're them both. We're talking state constitution versus federal constitution. I, I know. So I looked at them both. And then anyway, I courts. practiced law for like a decade, too, so I, I, I did read them and see... <laughs> A lot of similar words. Lucian, thank you. Good luck to you. And, 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 I, taught you, and I taught you that there was a separation between the, uh, that there was a difference between the federal constitution and the state constitution. Thank you for that. <laughs> All right. Good to see you. Joining me now with more, former Oklahoma State Senator and Chairman of the Oklahoma GOP, Randy Brogdon. Good to see you tonight, sir. So um, that was interesting. H however. Good evening, Megan. So he has a point. <laughs> that if you're going to display something that is religious on state grounds, you may have to open it up to more than just one faith, right? Well, no, that's not right at all, Megan. Uh, you are an attorney and you know how state law works, and that's the beauty of living in America. We have 50 different states with different ideas, different goals, different values, and each state is able to, uh, to uh, govern the people as the people allow that to happen. So here in Oklahoma, we take uh, uh, our government very serious. And even in the Oklahoma Constitution, the preamble states that we invoke the guidance of Almighty God. And so we take uh, that pretty seriously here in Oklahoma. Yeah, but if you open it up, if the state is seen as endorsing in any way or affirming one religion, that's where it gets into trouble. So if you could have solved the whole thing by letting him have his little... His little you know, baffin it. <laughs> well, uh, Megan, he would need to come to the state legislature and get his bill passed just like I did. I was a Senate author for this bill. Uh, Mike Ritz, the representative, was a House author, and uh, we moved that through, and we were very diligent in crafting the language because we knew the, the debate that was soon to follow, and so we put the language in there. Uh, and you had the benefit uh, of the U.S. Supreme Court decision, which had, which, had, which had happened years earlier. So, I mean, do you, it's, it's, sure. they talk about how the Oklahoma state yeah. constitution is different from the U.S. constitution. That's true. It's a little bit more narrow. But this court clearly could have read this to fall within the U.S. Supreme Court precedent, and they clearly didn't want it. They wanted those Ten Commandments gone. Yeah, they, they want the Ten Commandments gone, and like I said, when we wrote the legislation, we were very diligent to make sure that it did meet all of the criteria of the, of the uh, U.S. Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Now, with that said, I really don't believe the U.S. Supreme Court has uh, much to say on what we put on the Oklahoma Capitol grounds, but no. with that said, we knew what the debate would be, and so we wrote the legislation to guard against that. Mm -hmm. And yet, you, you lost seven to two uh, by judges who chose to read the Oklahoma <laughs> Constitution in the narrowest of ways, uh, which has raised some legitimate questions about whether right. they, they, they had an end that they wanted to meet and they got there. Randy, thank you for being here.